Congressman Warren Davidson joins me now to discuss this total nightmare and just lack of leadership from the Biden administration. Uh, welcome to the program, first time, Congressman. And first, let me say thank you for your service. And let's just get right to it. This is a international disgrace. We have dead Marines today. We have dozens of dead Afghanis, possibly American civilians too. The reports coming are so vague because everything's so messed up over there. Your assessment after what we witnessed happened today. You didn't think it'd get any worse? It got a whole lot worse. Look, President Biden knows this failure, uh, but look, previous things have gone wrong in American history. And the question is, is America gonna do what Americans do, which is rise to the challenge? Uh, you know, can't change the past. That was a horrible mistake. We need to hold all those folks accountable. But right now, as nightfall is there at the airfield in Kabul, uh, we need to establish or reestablish security at that airfield. Because if we do not, if the United States of America does not secure uh, Kabul International Airport, it's going to likely deteriorate. And normally that happens uh you know, exponentially. So we have to reestablish security and we may need to establish security elsewhere so that we can focus on the mission, not a deadline, not a date, but the mission that every single American citizen who wants to be evacuated is evacuated. And we should provide the support for our allies that made this possible. You brought up a good point, and I heard that earlier today. Some officials saying, is it Bagram, one of the air bases uh, that's a further out, we should reopen. I don't know why they were closed first. We should have left all air bases open to get everybody out from multiple airports and then pull the troops out, close up, and oh, by the way, take the equipment with. But that's just me. I was just a dumb um, buck sergeant in the Air Force 20-some years ago, so I don't know much about anything. Um, but wouldn't you do it that way? <laughs> yeah, I, I think anyone who, you don't have to have served in the military to just think through the logic of, let's see, should we take the people with guns out first and then try to get the, the, the civilians out? Or should we leave the people with the guns in, get the, get the civilians out, and then roll up the operation? I mean, sequentially, uh, this really couldn't have gone worse if there was a plan to make it worse. Uh, it, it is really bad. Uh, and, and the only thing that's going to fix it is, frankly, to trust our military to establish security. The authorization is already there. I mean, it's inherent to protect American citizens in Article 2. But the 2001 AUMF is still in place in Afghanistan. It deals directly with the Taliban. And look, we didn't negotiate our way into Afghanistan, and we certainly shouldn't feel obligated to negotiate our way out. Uh, it needs to be very clear to them and everyone else that America will get our civilians out. And... Um, and we'd like to do it with their cooperation, but either way, it's going to be done. I'm so glad you made that exact point about negotiations, because I'm pretty sure I recall that this country has a standing order that the United States of America does not negotiate with terrorists. Now, I understand the Taliban is trying to act like the new government that took control of a country, and we obviously negotiate with countries, but this is a terrorist organization. So by this administration allowing them to call the shots, Aren't, in essence, we breaking our golden rule and negotiating with terrorists? Well, look, uh, if the Taliban wants to be taken seriously as a government, they will establish security at the Kabul airport. Uh, and they will make it clear, no, we messed up. We let something happen on our watch. It's not going to happen again because it's the only way people are going to trust them to lead that country. Uh, the whole reason we came is because they couldn't prevent uh, terrorists from using their country as a sanctuary. And that's the most generous telling of the story. The reality is they were providing sanctuary for these terror organizations. So if they're going to go back to their old ways of just creating a big sanctuary for terrorists that intend to do harm to America and our allies, uh, as much as we want to leave, uh, we will visit all kinds of wrath upon those folks because we're not going to tolerate terrorist sanctuaries, especially not in Afghanistan. Yeah, we heard the... One of the suicide bombs today may have come from that new branched off division of ISIS that's already there. Um, but let's be real. What you just said, Congressman, is we won't stand for it. But this administration, by their actions and their words both, seem to be standing for it, taking it, standing there. I mean, we haven't even heard from the president as far as in the way of a response. Let me rephrase that. We haven't heard from Joe Biden on what the response will be to over 10 dead Marines. Yeah, just last week he said that, you know, if the Taliban harms any Americans, uh, they'll be held accountable. 
Now, ISIS-K, they're not new. They've been there for a while. They, they've, they've caused all kinds of problems. Uh, and just like when America started decreasing our presence in Iraq, ISIS moved in. ISIS has different goals than what the Taliban says their goal is. The ISIS wants to have a caliphate. It seems like the Taliban really wants to control Afghanistan. And then we should make it clear to the Taliban, hey, your opportunity to control Afghanistan begins with controlling ISIS-K. She should get serious about defeating them and making sure that they don't disrupt uh, America's exit from Afghanistan. Well, <clears throat> I guess it's a wait and see game. The deadline is drawing near. The uh, 31st is when everyone's supposed to be out. We, of course, have heard from the Taliban officials saying, get out or else. That's uh, if you want to call it a red line to use an Obama Biden era phrase. They said they've drawn a red line for us and we better be gone by next Tuesday. I don't know if, and you may know more in the briefings you get, if we're going to make that deadline and get everyone out in time, or in light of what happened today, should we be even concerned or worried about it? Like you just said, should we be setting our own timeline, finding our own guidelines, and pushing back if attacks continue against innocent civilians and, God forbid, more American troops? Don't you think? Yeah, look, uh, you know, President Biden should be saying that. He's frankly, done the exact opposite. He's defended the deadline. He's talked about how many people we've gotten out. The whole heroic uh, airlift out is because the plan to withdraw was so flawed. That is on President Biden. Yes. And frankly, lots of failures from his leadership team. Uh, but right now, President Biden needs to stop talking about a date, no matter what that date is. He needs to start talking about uh, an exit that is focused on conditions on the ground, which is every American who wants evacuated is safely evacuated. And that might mean that we increase our presence to secure other extraction points throughout the country, not just at Kabul. Frankly, it's an urban airport. It is tough to secure. And these are high risk operations. I mean, it's been a while since I was in Range Regiment. We trained on non-combatant evacuation operations. Uh, and, and, you know, I never did one. These people are on the ground doing them. They're very dangerous. They're very high risk. And this is a high risk operating environment. So, you know, execution of this plan, uh, you know, is vitally important to the success of the mission. So the idea that we could somehow withdraw, I've supported withdrawing from Afghanistan for a long time, but I have not and never will support leaving American citizens behind. And the idea that this president seems okay with it is morally offensive. Yes, it sure is. Warren Davidson representing Ohio's 8th Congressional District. Thanks again for your service, uh, not only in uniform.